Hello everyone, I'm Jean-Claude Abion Mystic and welcome to this deep woo-woo episode entitled The Quantum Healing with Sherry Divban. You can find her work here at Sherry Divban on YouTube and also at intuitivewellnesscenter.com. Let's give her a big warm welcome back to the show. Sherry, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me back. I'm doing well. <laughs> busy, busy in the last couple of weeks, as you can imagine. Uh, but I'm excited to have you back on. And I want to apologize to the audience. You and I were supposed to do a show last week. And of course, in the midst of all of these hiccups uh, that I've been suffering here on my website, my Patreon, and a few other places, uh, I had to reschedule quite a few shows. But I'm almost 100% uh, back to our production schedule here. So thank you so much, everyone, for bearing with us as we continue to fight these uh, censorship fights, I guess is the best way we can put it. So Sherry, what's up with you? Yeah. You know, Jean-Claude, everything happens for a reason. I And I'm so uh, sorry that you had to go through all of that. But, you know, I, in just this last week that we didn't meet, I got so much more information that I feel like I have to share today that it actually works out better for, for me because I've had some incredible sessions in the last two weeks that um, I've learned a lot and I, and I feel like I have a lot to share today more so than I would have uh, a week ago. So it worked out for me. Divinely timing. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, where do you want to start? I mean, uh, you and I on the last show, we were asking the audience to help us out here as there was an issue with your animator on your children's uh, teaching series. Uh, can you give the audience maybe an update on that? Yeah. Let's start there. Yeah, I would. I love to give an update on that. And I just want to say thank you to all of the people who donated and reached out and, and wanted to offer help. I uh, was just so happy to see so much support. Um, the kids really love these first two videos that we produced. And so um, they really wanted to help get them back on board. So we have found a new animator and it actually within the next uh, four days, we should um, have it completed video number three. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really excited. I hope it looks somewhat similar to the old animator, but we're doing our best to try to merge them together. I'm sure the children won't care you know, if it looks a little bit different, but um, right. I'm really excited uh, to get moving on this. And, and the fourth one will be right after that. And I'm hopeful that we could do one, one every month. So, so that's some good news. We found somebody, let's pray that they end up working out and, and, uh, and they do a good job because I won't know until I see it in the end. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, that's awesome. So thank you so much, everyone, for supporting uh, Sherry here on my last episode. I asked you guys uh, to also support her financially to get her uh, the ability and the means to produce all of these amazing videos for children. I think it's absolutely important. And if each and every one of us watching this episode live can even give one dollar, <laughs> it would make a big difference. Uh, thank you so much. Much says hello, JC, and welcome to Sherry. Claudette is from Northern Ontario. So she's about maybe five or six hours north of where I am. Even though we're in the same province, it's, uh, it's a big distance. Uh, so let me bring up that link again for the audience here who uh, maybe were looking for that uh, code uh, to uh, donate to you, Sherry. This is on your divinelyguidedchildren.com website. Let me click on this here and bring that link back down to the chat for the audience here. If you guys are interested in supporting Sherry in that animation work for children, here is the link now in the live chat. So thank you so much, everyone, yeah. for that. Okay, Sherry, man, as you're saying here this last week, it's been crazy. So never mind yeah. all of my technical stuff, but really in the ether as well, Janine and I have been talking about um, how everything is just coming to our head. Like in every video I've done with Cliff High, talking about the tipping point that we're in now with Penny Kelly, we talked about the white wall and what was just across the white wall. And of course with Janine also, these tarot card moments. So we're all there now. Let's speak to that. What are you getting with some yeah. of your healing sessions right now? And what can we share with the audience here? Because I'm sure a lot of them are feeling it. Some of them understand what's happening, but some of them might not understand and might be in the fear frequency. So we want to uh, maybe help them move out of that frequency and let them know that they're not alone right now. It is all hands on deck. It is, and that's the theme. That's the theme, exactly what you just said. There's so much going on. So those of you that don't know me, I do um, intuitive energy healing and soul readings for uh, both the um, adult audience and as well as children. Children are my focus. That's that's my mission to bring youth centers to children all around the world. And I'll give you some good news towards the end after once we get through all of this uh, to announce about that. Um, but 
interestingly, through my sessions, you know, I don't claim to be a psychic. I get my information when I'm doing sessions. When I do a session with somebody, I connect to their galactic team, their math, their ascended masters they work with, their um, angels, their spirit guides, their higher self, their soul communicates with me. And I learn tremendous amounts of information. So my intel is 100% spirit guided. So that's how I know about my information. So it's through my sessions that I am able to come forward and speak about a lot of these things. And recently, it's been absolutely insane, the information that's coming through. And it's so synchronistic. And, and one session validates the next because they're coming in grows with very with similarities. So I want to start with the adults first, because I've had a few people reach out to me since interviews that I do. And they say, you always talk about children. What about what about us adults? And, you know, and, and again, I don't mean to offend. It's not that I intend to leave out adults. In fact, 50 percent of my clients are adults. Um, but I don't talk about that much because I was, I'm usually so focused on the children because that's really what, where my mission is right now. But I do help a lot of, of um, the adult community um, through this ascension. And so through my sessions recently, I would say in the last six months, but very specifically in the last 30 days, something has happened in the last 30 days that has shifted significantly. I, I can't exactly... I can't say exactly what it is, but collectively you'll understand with the information I bring forward. But the general theme, and I, I can I can pretty much guarantee many people watching this right now are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. And they have been, you know, aware, but kind of spiritually asleep their entire life. And then suddenly in their adulthood, something has activated them. A lot of times, pre a lot of them pre-COVID, but really the whole pand pandemic and things really woke people up. So that's where the, a large cluster is coming. And they're confused and they're wondering, why now? Why am I suddenly becoming activated? Why, what have I been wasting my whole life on? And I and I keep asking the, these questions to their guides. You know, why now? Why, are, why is everybody suddenly waking up? What is it that they need to do? And I keep hearing all hands on deck over and over and over in, in so many different ways, um, all hands are on deck right now. And what they're saying is that I use the analogy to help people understand if anyone watching this is familiar with the Wizard of Oz and the analogy or the metaphor they use with the poppy seed field where, you know, you go in this field and everybody just falls asleep because of the toxic chemicals and that the flowers give off. And so when I started my YouTube channel, um, almost a year ago, I started talking about how humanity is much like in the, they're in the poppy seed field. So they're very fast asleep. And slowly, as you look around, people are waking up. Yes, exactly. And they're waking up and they're like, whoa, where am I? What is this something? You know, they notice that things are not um, that they're not what they seem. And so they're slowly starting to wake up. And that's happening in mass amounts in the last uh, year to 16 months. So the people are like, okay, so what do I do with this information now? And what I'm getting very clearly is we are we have reached this pivotal point in the ascension process where we're all, like we talked about last time. We're all in a lot of people are in that 4D period where they're yeah. they're they're being encouraged to heal. And and what I have been told is we are about to reach this point in humanity where everything is breaking down. I talk about that a lot. The the paradigms of the medical industry, the polit political industry, um, education, all of it's breaking down and it's about to be rebuilt. Can you imagine the amount of work it's going to take to rebuild our humanity, our society, and with, uh, with positive energy in a higher vibration, with a higher consciousness um, that collectively we will share, which is how it's been done for eons before outside of this country until we were um, slowly taken over. And so um, we need a lot of people. So all those people that have been asleep are suddenly, why am I six zero years old just now waking up? Well, it's time for you to become activated. So this lull period is about healing. So it's about preparing yourself, healing your timelines, getting yourself prepared. Because what's around the corner is everybody is going to be working together, the elderly, the adults, and the, uh, the youth, and then the children. Everybody has a role to play. And so... All of the people waking up that are retired or hate their jobs, everything is about to break down and we have to rebuild it and we need everybody's help. And so there's so much work to do just around the corner. 2022 is going to be a huge shift in rebuilding humanity in all aspects of life, in all areas of the world. And so 
um, that's profound because they finally have been, get, have been getting an answer as to, okay, why now? What's happening next? What's happening next is you're about to contribute in a very, very profound way. Are you actually ready for this? Um, and the answer is yes, most people are because those that are awake and watching this, you know, others may not right. so, so much. Now, the other thing is the children that I worked in, and I talk about this in my book a lot in Divinely Guided Children, is that the older generation right now, I, my heart goes out to them because I can't tell you how many 20 to 30 year olds, actually, let's bring it back to like 16 to 30 year olds that I work with who are feeling disconnected. They don't feel like they belong. They never felt like they fit in. There's no jobs that interest them. There's no subjects that interest them. They're completely feeling lost. They're unmotivated. Their parents contact me because they say they're sit there in my basement. They won't work. They won't go to, they won't go to college. What's wrong with them? And I'm trying to scream at the top of my lungs, there's absolutely nothing wrong with any of them. They are just waiting for their turn because it's about to happen. And all of those beautiful beings that have been waiting, recognizing that there are things wrong with the world, recognizing that the school system is absolute ridiculousness. It's not teaching them anything. It's all about programming. They're not learning what they need to learn. So the children are starting to recognize, I don't, I don't understand school, it doesn't make sense. They're starting to recognize um, that the jobs out there don't align with what they don't resonate with what they're feeling like they can do to contribute. And so they don't know they, they don't have anywhere to go. And so they're just slowly feeling like I don't belong. And in reality, they do belong. They're just they have the hardest job to do because they're the ones that that are going to use their beautiful minds and their wisdom to help us rebuild um, new structures new programs. They're going to use the wisdom from wherever they come from to help us rebuild. So if you can imagine collectively, this is a huge hands on deck operation. And I have been told repeatedly that despite the fact of what we see on mainstream media and through many other avenues where we feel like um, we're losing, we've actually won. And this is just physicality playing out. And that's why when I saw Penny's um, Penny's white wall, I've been saying, seeing very similar things for, for years with, with regard to blockages and not being able to see what's what's in front of me it, it wasn't a white wall but it was just basically uh, i wasn't getting answers <laughs> they're just like we don't have answers for you yet and that has a lot to do with the collective consciousness the speed of which we move forward has a lot to do with what everybody is putting their energy on right now and if people are projecting their energy towards the dark and fear um then it's going to take us a lot longer but i see the good i can see it through my sessions with hundreds of people that I, that I work with to help guide them with the children and knowing that they're, they're, they're about to come up their, their, their time has come. So you, I hope you're ready. You know, you've been bored this whole time, but, but you're about to get really busy. Are you ready for it? You know? And so there's so many great things on the horizon that it just, it hurts my soul when I see people walking around in fear because, you know, if the light has won, then that means that the dark ones are are throwing knives. We talked about this before we got went on the air. I literally can visualize them th th just throwing knives into the atmosphere, and they're trying to take down anybody that will that will catch it. Anyone in a low vibration, like oh you get it here, oh you get it here, and they're trying to scare you to bring you back down because they know if they keep you in a vibration of of fear and worry they will uh, keep you from tapping into your higher awareness or trusting or having faith that anything can come, good can come of this. So they are doing everything they can to give us the most amount of negative things that they can right now to scare everybody back down into a lower, lower vibration because they know we're waking up. They know that we're watching these shows and people are coming on and talking about this and they don't like that. So they need to say, do whatever they can to uh, put us back in fear mode. And they're just throwing swords at us, just throwing it left and right. So we got to dodge them, you know, we got to move left to right, down, up, you know, and we do that, not literally, we don't walk around outside doing this because we may not see them, but we do it energetically by raising our consciousness and focusing on the fact that we've already won. I want, if you, everyone just says, we've already won uh, and focus on the humanity that you want to build. Those people that are into education, what what do you want to see for the children? Those of you that want a future in politics, but in a better way, what project what it is that you're visualizing? It would be it will look like um, medical uh, systems. If you're in the medical industry, I work with a, a lot of people that are nurses and doctors who are fed up. Okay, well, let's design in your mind what it is that you want it to look like now. So stop thinking about what's happening now and think about project 
manifest what it is that we want our future to look like. And that's what all hand, hands on deck really is all about. That's really cool. And there's a lot of people I'm just monitoring the chat as you were talking here. So thank you for that introduction, Sherry. It really sets the stage for our conversation. Uh, Richard is saying, yeah, I'm 67, recently woke up and asking why now? Well, there you go. Sherry just told you. And uh, Claudette Leblanc also, she says, man, I've been praying for this for 30 years. I'm 70 years now. And yay, I'm finally going to get to see it manifest. Uh, so many of you are in that same frequency and vibe right now. So that's absolutely amazing that we're all gathering here. And isn't it suspicious why this channel keeps getting <laughs> trouble so that they would disband all of these people when we need to band together right now. So we, yeah. we understand what's happening here and the stakes are really, really high. So I love that you mentioned the white wall. I did this video with Penny here. It was called ETs and Human Trafficking. And we got into why she was having trouble for the last six or eight months seeing past that white wall and what just happened recently uh, to enable to not only see past the white wall but to have permission to talk about that because we have all of this idea of soul contracts here on the planet we have the idea of free will here too and a lot of these ets that are here now respect those laws where as some of them don't there is still a big quadrant of them that respect those laws of free will so we're all in this together now and as sherry was talking about um i think in the last couple of weeks it was it became very apparent that we're all hands on deck. Janine and I were getting all of these emails from our subscribers, from our Twitter accounts, that uh, people were just waking up now in the morning having felt like they had fought all night. So when you talked about this machine right now that's throwing all these knives, trying to bring us down, they know this is the last hour for them as well. Uh, and we just need to hold that line. This is what I've been repeating here for the last couple of weeks. And even for myself, with all the troubles I've been having, uh, trying to send and share this information with you guys, I'm like, no, hold that line. We're not stepping yeah. backwards, not even one inch. God damn it. Let's keep <laughs> forward. <laughs> So it's been a hell of a ride and man, I, I'm getting goosebumps as you were talking because I feel that a lot of people watching this show, not just live here, we have 350 in here, but who will watch it also on replay, they're being called to watch it for a reason. And for like many people like Claudette here was like, yeah, I knew this, I just didn't know why and now I'm excited. So we're all hands on deck. Let get, let, let's talk to, we have the veterans out here who have known this all of their lives or maybe very recently, but they're still, but they're very, oh, how do I say it? They feel stable in that knowing right now. So those are kind of okay right now. They're on side. They know that they have to do something. They know that they're going to work really hard to recreate, but there are those adults. Let's talk to the adults first who are just waking up now and they're still kind of like, iffy, they're dodgy, they're still getting those knives, uh, as you're saying here, maybe they're still on some types of medications, maybe they're still, you know, um, uh, how do I say it, diminished by old programmings that no longer serve them, they haven't done that work yet. So those people are the, uh, the sway factor here, and we want to make sure that we keep them on this side. What do we say to them as they're looking at all of this and they're kind of feeling afraid of all of this woo-woo and, and, and being nudged back to maybe those old boxes they were in because they thought they had safety in that? How do we address those yeah. people now? Yeah, well, that's an that's a, that's a interesting question because um, it's actually different. For, uh, for a lot of different people in different situations, depending on what you're what you're in. And so I tell people to pick their battles um, because it's 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 a challenging place. There's a thin line between trying to guide others and bringing your vibration down by being entrapped by theirs. And so it's about planting the seeds and sending them to certain podcasts. Perhaps they, they say, hey, why don't you check out a few of Jean-Claude's uh, videos or uh, let me sh share with you a few books. Um, that might, it's all about planting the seeds, you know, because we, we can't force other people's awakening. I think that what forces other people's awakening is, are, are, is disclosure, things actually coming out in a way that they can't deny it. But we're not quite there yet, although it is happening, they're suppressing it very quickly. And so uh, up until, you know, the point where it's pretty clear that this, this is no conspiracy anymore, the things that a lot of the things that are being talked about and, and revealed, um, until then, it's about really just, you know, I, I came up with a metaphor. I, I did a spiritual, um, a spirit circle for years before before everything happened and everything shut down. And the purpose of it was to provide a safe space for like-minded people. At the, at the time, it was people in my area because I wasn't really doing much on Zoom. Um, 
and to just to talk about spiritual spirituality i mean pretty much anything you name it we talked about and um a lot of them came, sought out the spirit circle because they didn't have anybody to talk to because they were like an early awakener awakened early and so they didn't have anybody to talk to about they didn't know what books to read so we would just share things with each other and one of the things i would always tell people is um just um just uh, hold the space. Yeah. I couldn't think of it. I lost, I lost my train of thought. I did a whole YouTube video on this back in like September, if, if people want to go back and look at it, or maybe it was October. But it's all about holding the space for everybody. So what that means is instead of trying to influence others and bring yourself down by fighting and, and getting into debates, because it's really you're just going around in circles. It's about um, holding your vibration and your light and healing yourself and expanding, like I talked about last time, brightening your light and then you mm. hold the space you hold the energy imagine if all the people could just hold that space and expand their light as much as possible like these merkabas of light just shining outward that's called holding the space you're holding the intention for everybody around you so that hopefully that light can seep into little areas through their energy field and then just hopefully reconnect because the problem with sleepers is not that there's anything wrong with them it's the fact that they're consciousness has been disconnected their soul and their and the little life force energy that they have that cord that connects through the crown chakra and into the physical body there's a disconnect there so they're not able there's not a clear channel to their soul and so they are easily manipulated and and um and asleep to the world around them because they are in hypnosis essentially yeah. what it is they're in the poppy seed field and so we need to wait and help while these people reconnect while their soul and the avatar reconnect and, and, and establish a relationship again, a clear channel of communication to the higher consciousness and then to the collective consciousness that I describe as like a, like a massive web of energy that just intertwines like a spider web. That's about, you know, eight feet above all of us and we all have access to it. So we all have infinite knowledge, just like the Pleiadians do and the Andromedans do and everybody else and Syrians, they all talk about it. We have that ability, but the, problem is is that we've been brought down to such a low vibration in 3d that we don't have that connection with the soul anymore and the soul is what has connection to the collective consciousness of humanity so it's been it's been broken off um uh, at, the, at the source i hope this is making sense absolutely if we, Keep could, going. If, if we could just expand our light and hold the space hold the hold my if i could just hold my vibration as strong as possible especially when i'm around a lot of people who don't hold that vibration, who are very much asleep, that think I'm absolutely insane. And, and there are many, so it, it doesn't hurt my feelings. I just continue to hold the space for them and, and the hope that my light eventually will kind of go in and seep in and help to reconnect the soul with the higher frequency energy that's in their, in their um, field. And everybody watching this can do the same. So hold the space for your family, your loved ones, your neighbors, and then those that are, that are, that you can help you will, but release, the guilt and the responsibility of holding the weight for everybody else. You can't do that. So it's just no. hold the space and, and everything else will fall into place. I truly believe that because we're waking up and I, I told you last time I get emails by the dozens uh, overnight. I just woke up literally last week. I saw Michael Jaco show. I saw Jean-Claude and, and I, I, oh my God. And they're overwhelmed and people are waking up every single day. You know, and so it's about supporting those. I'm getting goosebumps as you're saying that too, because we're connected to this field. And this is why I put this picture in the background there, just to show uh, uh, graphically what she was just talking about now, this connection that we have, not just to our higher selves, but consciousness in general. And I really like what you're saying about just concentrating on yourself right now. And I know it sounds selfish, but it's not. <laughs> because if we all individually hold our own center and hold our frequency high, that's it it's game over we've won this and then we can all come together to create these new structures that we want for ourselves as opposed to the ones that were imposed to ourselves um in this energy extraction matrix we found ourselves in so this is the name of the game right now i i, I really like the way you communicate sherry because it makes it very uh um 
I don't want to say simple because you're no way simple minded, but simple for people who are just waking up now to understand some of these very um, uh, higher concepts that you're talking about. So thank you, uh, Sherry, for that. I wanted to bring up this idea here of the Beyond Alta uh, with Cliff High show I did. It was called the Big Woo. And in there, uh, of course, Cliff does these uh, predictive linguistics and he's been predicting the future for quite some time. He's, he's got a, an amazing track record there. But what was important in this one here is he was talking about what you just said now, the great awakening of humanity. And he had tweeted just before we did this show that perhaps July 24th would be that day that when we look back in history was that pivoting point for humanity. And there's a lot of reasons for that. So go watch the show and you'll get the understanding and all the history in the background that brought us to today, but now going into tomorrow. What was interesting there is that Cliff had been seeing in his data for the last number of years, these creations of what he called SOCs, self-organizing collectives. And this is what Sherry's alluding to in her own way here, in her own terminology. As we, the people who are woken up, holding this frequency and being there for everybody else that's waking up, we are being charged by universe, by consciousness, to create these self-organizing collectives, bring these people with knowledge together and this compassion together to start looking at, okay, this is crumbling over there. This is crumbling over there. We get it. Those are the old structures and they have no choice but to crumble in these new frequencies. So we can't hold on to them. <laughs> what we need to get together in these collectives is to bring this higher consciousness and this higher heart energy together to build what we want here in the future. And a big part of that, of course, is our children. Let's get into the kids that are waking up now and what you're picking up. And I'm not sure if you want to share all of that on this episode, or maybe it's for another episode, but there's a lot happening right now in the reincarnation process. Now I've done many shows over the last couple of years where we talked about how this reincarnation process had been designed to basically thwart <laughs> a lot of the key players in the, um, humanity's history and now what's happening is we're getting a lot of those old players that might have been prevented from doing their job in the first place coming back now because as sherry is saying we are all hands on deck what can yeah. you share with the audience on that level yeah um you know i i want i have to say that the week of the 24th i'm in 100 percent alignment with and resonance with because that was a massive week for me in disclosure and the things that I received in, in my sessions. So uh, there was something that happened significantly um, in the last two weeks, really. Yeah. Um, so I have so many people are reincarnating. It's absolutely unbelievable. And so it's all about that all hands on deck. And not only are they reincarnating, but their souls are splitting into many different, many different, what you have. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I, again, goosebumps all over. It, keep going. I'm just excited to hear what you have to say. <laughs> I know. I, I'm just I, like, I, yes, I'm she's on it. I know. I know. There's so many things. I mean, gosh, I don't know if we can fit it all in one episode, to be honest today, but I'm going to try my best. Okay. okay. So there's so many. I'm talking big. Okay. Let's just give an example. The soul of Apollo has at least 10 physical incarnations right now all over the globe. Um, and not only is he in the physical form in 10 different places, but he is one of like, he's playing a pivotal role in the soul anyways, um, in battling the dark, um, in the astral plane. Cause there's a lot of, a lot is happening energetically, not just in the physical form. I've had a lot of sessions with people that are doing absolutely nothing during the day and come to find out in my session. I'm like, do you have any idea? Well, obviously they didn't how much you're doing to help humanity right now during your sleep hour like it's there your guides are telling you you need a non-stressful day because you're doing so much work at night you couldn't possibly do to anything else so everyone's contributing on a level that they're not even aware of likely um cleopatra uh um my i'm not going to reveal that one i'll keep that that's one okay. for <laughs> that's what i meant about choose your words it's okay yeah yeah go into uh, too many I found some things about my own family recently but i'm not right. going to share that just yet um uh, King Philip II, Alexander the Great. I mean, there's there are there are so many people reincarnating right now, um, and and it may not it's, it could just be aspects of their soul, fragments of their soul that have come in and split in many different forms in order to to um, participate in this all hands on deck 
um, uh, period of time that we are in humanity because everybody is fight. Everybody is fighting for us, at least those that want us to to um, be in peace um, and survive this period so that we can finally um, live in a world that is um, the Aquarian age, really. That's what it is. That's the easiest way to put it. And so um, there's so many people fighting to, to guide us. And I want to say something else, too, because I had a lifetime in Lemuria. And I, of all the sessions that I've done um, over the years, I haven't found very many. To be honest, you know, most people that I most pe most people are more at like the Atlantean group, not the Lemurian. Not many people even know about Lemuria. Um, and I have been told that I am one of the, the reason that I have been chosen or I decided to uh, dedicate my life to youth and creating the youth centers, which are way bigger than I even ever imagined. There, Everything with that is just growing exponentially, um, that I'm so excited about it. I think it will really pave the way for the future of, of education with what I'm creating, which we could talk about more in a minute. But um, now it just made, that just made me lose my train of thought. Maybe that means I need to go back. To, uh, I need to talk about that first. Um, well, no, let, let's let's come back later to the children here because I, I think we'll do the first part here on all the adults and then we'll get into that. But as we're talking now, we were on the topic of reincarnations. So the yeah. big players that are coming back now, how all of that well, is Lemurian, connecting. I, sorry, yes, I, I lost my train of thought. I'm like, okay. all, lately, I can't even keep my thoughts straight. I'm just like rapid fire, like fireworks yeah. in my brain. Um, yeah. it, it's crazy. Okay. So um, a lot of the Lemurians, so that predominantly would be Pleiadians, um, were in the time of Lemuria, and a lot of them are reincarnating right now who had the principles who also, that, that are Pleiadians, that also were in the time of Lemuria. There are hundreds of thousands of them right now. Um, and what they're here to do is to help us redesign humanity to follow a lot of the Lemurian principles because Lemuria was very spiritual based. You know, the women um, were regarded as, 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 uh, as um, guides and teach great teachers and they taught the children. And then the, the men were more of the, the um, uh, structures of society and things like that. But a lot of the teachings that are, are classes, ideas that are coming to me with children are of the Lemurian principles with the teaching wheel and allowing children to decide what it is that they wanna learn getting rid of great the grades that we have i guess this is kind of merging together with my with what i was going to talk about with the kids but the but the point is is that a lot of people from lemuria are coming back now um in order to help us rebuild so a lot of those 60s 50 60 70 year olds that i've done those sessions with are lemurians coming back and they're activated now in order to help us rebuild the society next year and on and on um, in the, in the Lemurian principles, which are, um, very spiritual, very loving, very kind, con teaching us to connect to our higher awareness. Um, I mean, we could talk about that for another hour. So, um, but that was another example of a lot of the mass reincarnation are the Pleiadian Le Lemurians that are here to help us redesign the society. Um, and, and I was get one more thing, and then I can tell you have a question. Uh, in two, two or three sessions, I've been told that it's coming full circle. They kept saying this term, it's coming full circle, Sherry. And what they were trying to explain to me is all of the Lemurians that were here before and everything that happened in between and, and, and the suppression of, of human beings. And now look, look at where we are now. We have an opportunity to revive and thrive and bring our humanity back to where it once was. And so we're coming full circle. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that that really resonated with me because, uh, you know, we won. And if we, the, all the Lemurians wouldn't be coming back to help build a new society if we weren't there yet. Is this making right. sense? If, yes. if, if we didn't have, it would, the, 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 the Lemurians or the, the, the Mu uh, wouldn't be here if it wasn't time yet. Right. Let's talk about the land of Mu for just a moment here, but I want to address that comment on the screen. Tom is saying, hey, I'm a JC uh, Patreon and I like the, year, the yearly. Okay, I'm going to make this very quick because I don't want to take away from Sherry's uh, knowledge here. And there's a few people asking, what's happening with Patreon? So very quickly, guys, I did put out a notification by email just earlier today to all of the Patreon members letting you know that the fix is in. So the Insider Access Pass is now available on our website. And this is what Tom is alluding to. So go check your emails, but I will also make other update videos maybe later tonight or tomorrow on that subject. Okay, going back to Moo. 
as we're doing this yes. return or this full circle, I'm guided to ask you here, I know it's unprompted, um, I'm guided to ask you about crystals. Now, whether it was Lemuria, Atlantis, there has been this idea of this misuse of some technology. And when you talk about going back full circle, let's talk about maybe some of the pitfalls that some of us returning here might be tempted to go full circle again and maybe make those same mistakes as we did in the past. Can we speak to those souls right now to really make them understand that this time it is different and also to watch for those pitfalls where power breeds power, breeds corruption, breeds corruption. And, and we saw the, the last thousands of years uh, as a result of that. Let's, let's get into that a little bit if you want to share. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about, about Lemurians, you know, they, they didn't have a, um, they didn't have a hierarchical, hi, how do you say that? Higher hierarchical society? Yeah. society, you know, they knew how to create, um, groups that, that had different, um, skills and something to contribute. So it's like those, those groups would lead when it was appropriate to lead. So everybody had, and that's what, that's what we're trying to teach the children is to put them in the groups instead of grades, you put them in groups of, of their development, like-mindedness, what their skill set is. That's how they did it before. So, you know, there's always, there's always, there's the yin and the yang, you know, there's always the, the, the bad and the good. And it you, always has to do with power. That's the thing is that people want to have power. So if we redesign our society, to align with the principle of the of the Lemurians where there is no power structure. It's all about dividing the power, not power, we can't even use that word, dividing the um, roles into different groups so that no one actually has any power. I, I talked to Michael Jacobs' show, people thought I was insane, that I, I see politics completely breaking down and there will right. be no parties anymore. There's no, there, won't, there will be no more parties yeah. um, because that's, that's how you derive you know, uh, the, the power of struggle and the battle and the deceitfulness and all of that. Um, and so it's all about reshaping the dynamics in a way that I don't think most people in the world right now really fully can understand. And I'll be honest with you, I don't completely understand it either, but I, I get the gist of it. But it, it's, 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 in a, it's in a way that none of us have seen in this, partic in this life. So they can't, you can't imagine it. You can't envision. We can't envision the children teaching the children or dividing into groups where it's of like-mindedness. So there is no control. I've talked to other contactees and they're saying something similar to you right now where they see this new structure uh, taking form and they kind of called it a holographic society as opposed to the higher uh, archical society you were just talking about now. So much more uh, deeply faceted than what it used to be with that polarization and so i think as we waking up and rise, uh, wake up and rise our frequency we'll start to understand those higher dimensions of how that structure can look like so i think this is what you and i are all struggling with here because we see glimpses of it and i'm like what am i looking at <laughs> right is it a triangle is it a merkaba is it you know a, a yeah. yes it's all of them above and more right so we're cool. like okay what am i seeing here so yeah. I think that's fascinating. Going back to the crystals, I had another question for you. Yeah. Is it possible that some of door oh, should I even say that on this show? Uh oh. Okay. Oh, well, okay. No, I'm going to ask it this way. I'm going to change uh, um, a strategy. Is it possible that there are people watching this show right now? Hold on. Yeah, close that. Okay. Is it? It's funny. I'm getting interrupted just on that point. Okay. <laughs> Is it possible that there's people watching on this show, this show right now or on replay who are in possession of crystals that date back to Lemuria and they are being reactivated, whether they know it or not, from their crystals as well in terms of connecting <laughs> with each and every one of us here on this grid and call it these groups that you're talking about or what Cliff High calls about the self-organizing collectives. What's that role there? Because, I'm, again, I'm being pinged <laughs> about these crystals. Yeah. So, yes, the answer to that is absolutely yes. Um, I have five of them uh, myself, and I know many people have them, and they're very powerful. Um, but the, the, the thing is that you don't know how to activate them because they're, they're, they have keys. It's like the key that holds the knowledge. 
And if you're not in a right resonance or a vibration, you won't be able to use them appropriately. You know, and the same with same with just regular crystals. Or not regular. I don't mean to make any crystals better than other crystals. They're all profound. And our galactic families understood um, their power and how they can hold the life force energy in order to uh, power ships, how to heal. Um, the, the, the possibilities are endless. And so, um, but so they, that's one of the things that we should be going back to is everybody should go buy some crystals and connect to their energy because they're, it's powerful. Um, but you won't be able to activate those Lemurian crystals or that get to access that knowledge if you don't have the right resonance in order to, to do it. Absolutely. And what we're seeing too, and what I'm seeing with my kids, they were buying crystals when they were five or six, I would bring them to the crystal store and they, they would basically listen and then pick the crystals that was screaming at them. So I love it. The kids have a lot more ability yeah. to tune in to crystals than we do, but we're learning. <laughs> so the kids are showing us the way here. Let uh -huh. me ask you this one here too. As it pertains to the Hopi prophecy, and now we're going to go into the four corners of the United States. Is it possible there? Have you ever heard this or in your intuition as I'm speaking this here, is it possible that there are very, very specific crystals there in the earth that are still being protected, maybe hidden, but just ready now to come to the surface in the hands of people who are going to be taking these very active roles? How does that resonate to you? Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the biggest is in, um, in, um, in Australia. At Uluru, um, you know Mount Shasta. There's, there's, in Hawaii, you know, there's so many places that they are there. They've never left, um, but they were, but the um, energy was kept um, from the dark side, I guess you want to say, so that they didn't, they weren't able to use their power, um, and so that's why they want to infiltrate the light because they want to have the ability to use our knowledge. That's what they. That's what a lot of the um, uh, ETs came here to begin with because they they can't create and they need our consciousness in order to access a lot of the knowledge because they're not actually human beings um they weren't seated in this earth you know their body they don't have that body that connection and so they're they're not able to access that that um that knowledge the wisdom and the power Okay, I'm guided to show an image for the audience. There's people out there who need to see this and they'll resonate to what I'm about to say and then we'll move on to another topic. So again, just going back to the Four Corners, Utah, uh, um, Arizona, New Mexico, you can see it on the map here. Yeah. There's something here for a lot of you. And so if you are being called to this region, of course, you know that I'm in New Mexico for the last couple of years here on this very spe specific spiritual adventure. I think a lot of you watching the show are also called to these areas. And if so, pay attention to that. I know that there's still some restrictions and all the hoopla going on now, but start tuning in your frequency to what's there. And again, I believe my perspective right now, it does connect to the conversation we're having here today about Lemuria and also potentially Atlantis. There's, we could do a whole show on that, but I just want to let you know, guys, if you're being drawn to these areas, pay attention and maybe give in and just follow how universe will bring you there if that is of course on your soul contract uh, mission okay uh sherry we're 42 minutes in again it goes so fast with you it's incredible let's get into the kids here a little bit you wanted me to bring up um oh. more on that so let me bring up your divinely uh, guided uh, children page here for the audience now let's let's tune into <clears throat> well let's talk to the parents first for those parents who have these amazingly gifted kids who for some reason now society might say that they're damaged, whether it's from, you know, different afflictions right now, they're having trouble connecting to these frequencies here. They're usually labeled as special kids, but they're special in a very different way. Let's talk to that a little bit, give a hint to these parents as to the role that they have to ensure that they can foster these kids to grow up, to do exactly what they're here supposed to do, as opposed to taking more of these uh, chemicals that might suppress those abilities. Can we touch that very delicately here in our choice of words? Um, <clears throat> yes. So, you know, the the children, first of all, they're all high vibrational. They're all exceptional. And after the year 2000 and even more specifically after 2012, um, the children being born right now are um, the one of the most um, high vibrational um, beings that are here to help us rebuild that that's their purpose. They, they come here 
to help us rebuild society, knowing that they came in in this exact moment in time, and they will be the ones that help us rebuild um, based on their wisdom and knowledge, depending on where they come from. And unfortunately, them coming into this earth matrix, and many of them, by the way, have had no life. So this is their first. So, or they've had just a few. So energetically, they're having a difficult time aligning with the resonance of the planet um, because we are in a, that, that third density space. So these, you know, um, fifth, sixth, seventh, even ninth, I met the other day, ninth density um, uh, uh, beings coming in here, actually higher, um, in these physical bodies and they're struggling. And so energetically, there's a lot more going on. But unfortunately, in, as our society is designed, these children are being um, categorized and labeled because they're different and they're different for a reason because they're here to um, to be the, the catalyst of change. And so they um, are either extremely right brain, which are the, the autistic um, children that are labeled autistic or ADHD, extremely right brain. They're very connected to spirit. They don't like to look people in the eyes. They don't want to speak uh, because they don't speak where they come from. It's all telepathic, which I can tell you a story about that. Um, I was told that 2030 is a pivotal year for uh, for us to transition into tele telepathic communication by a five-year-old autistic child that I spoke with um, a little over a month ago. Wow. So, um, you know, they don't want to, they, um, they don't really fit in. Then we have the Asperger's children that are extremely left-brained because they're so high, highly intelligent that they're here to rebuild society, the, the, the um, um, genetics, uh, sciences, um, interstellar travel. I mean, you name it, they're here. Technology, they're here to bring forth a lot of innovation, a lot of advancements in our technology that's been held back because, um, well, we, we all know why it's been held back. And so now it's going to, all those doors will open up for us again. And so they're here for it to do a very important job. So unfortunately, a lot of these children are being labeled and parents are having a difficult time because they're, they're, they're being pressured to medicate them. Um, and, you know, I've done so many interviews on this, so I don't want to spend too much time because right. like a million interviews, you can go back and watch. And I talk about it in, in my book, but um, the important thing to know now is the biggest question I get is how do I support them? The parents are asking me, what do I do? I can't send them back to school. And I just, I keep telling them, just hold on a little bit longer because I know I'm not the only one out there trying to create youth centers where, which I would, they're, 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 they're like spiritual beginning centers so that they learn the, the foundations and the basics of Lemurian teachings and probably Andromedan teachings and other places where you, um, the children starting at the age of three and four and five years old, all the way throughout their uh, developmental years, they're learning about mindfulness and, and spirituality and connecting to your higher consciousness, how to channel and understand your emotions, um, how to uh, understand energy and healing. Um, I mean, you name, you name it. I want these to be in youth centers all over in every city, major city and all, all over the world. Uh, so that these children can go um, and learn what they're supposed to be learning in school, uh, life, basic life skills, um, uh, how to manage stress, um, gardening, how to ground yourself and connect to the earth. And Christ, and then there's other fun classes like animal communication and uh, Christ, you know, crystal classes and meditation outside and, and, and sports, but in a whole new trajectory and mindset of less comp competition and more understanding the power of, of the body um, and the athlete athleticism that comes along with it. So things are changing. It's just not happening in the time frame that we would like. I've talked many times about universities going down and trade schools opening up where your child doesn't need, just goes and learns what it is that they want to do. And then in six months to two years, they're out in the field working and it's, and it's free or, or low cost. I, I've, I've been getting these visions for six plus years. I just didn't understand it until very recently how profound it is, um, how things are about to change. And I think it's just going to take people like myself that are making it happen. I'm working with investors uh, to create at least five youth centers in the next year um, in, in five major cities. Um, and then I, my vision is to create um, one in every major city within five years. So uh, it's a huge endeavor that I'm taking on um, and I'm looking for as much help as I, as, as I can from teachers, parents, 
investors, uh, healers, people. I mean, I, this is a massive undertaking what I'm doing right now, but I believe in, um, in our children and they, and if the school systems are not going to give them what they need, then people like myself and anyone watching this, that's inspired by it. We need to work together to create it. So focusing our energy on exactly what I said at the beginning of the show, instead of being in fear about lockdowns and this and all of that and what's happening, I can't, we can't use the keywords. Um, focus your attention on what it is that you want to build. So I refuse to focus my energy on any of that. And right now I am working on business plans, creating the curriculum, the classes, because what I have been told is at some point when parents get involved and they see this, there will be such a demand that schools will have no choice, but to implement a lot of the curriculum that I'm creating in the school system, in the public school system, where we are, the children are learning this stuff as part of their uh, academic uh, curriculum. So wow. there's, there's a lot going on with that. And I'm really excited to be a part of it. And I just, um, I wanted to talk about that a little bit today because it's, it's getting bigger by the day, even with, uh, from the last time we spoke. And um, I'm just really excited about this, this venture for the children, because it's been, it's been, it, I wish I had it when I was a child. And I have people that are in their 80s saying, I wish I had it. 80 years ago when I was born. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <clears throat> um, me too. Yeah, of course, when we're talking about this, it resonates so much. Let me bring up your page again here. And for anyone who wants to support you in that mission, so that's divinelyguidedchildren.com. I believe I still have the links to both Sherry's accounts here are in the description box. If I don't, I will go and do that again after the show. Uh, but let me bring up her uh, PayPal donation uh, page again, guys, if you want to support her in that mission. Um I encourage you to think about it. Thank you so much. So in the last couple of minutes here, Sherry, you were talking about having some of these healing uh, Reiki sessions uh, with children lately. And the message everywhere across the board with the children and the adults is all hands on deck and we're coming full circle. But can you share maybe in the last couple of minutes here, some of the maybe highlights of what the children are telling you or what their guides or ET families are telling you through these healing sessions? Um. I think the theme is, which is why I'm so excited today. I, I have released so much worry and fear um, because, and excitement for my youth centers because I can actually see uh, the end result is that in, in, so, in not so many words, we've won. It, it, you know, all of this wouldn't be going in motion if we weren't there yet. We would, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and so the children are telling me, this is what I've come in here for. I'm in the right family. There's nothing wrong with me. Um, let's shift our attention. Uh, you know, it's time to envision a new world and we're here to help you create that. So we wouldn't be allowed to come in if we weren't at a pivotal point in our ascension process. And so that's the biggest message I'm getting across the board. And each session I do is we are on the right track, despite what you may see or where you may hear what you may hear. Um, through the television and all of these other avenues, don't believe it. Just focus your attention on the light because they're show I'm actually getting visions now of the future in a very specific way of what the kids will look like and the classes and more specifics that I never got before. And I wouldn't be getting that if we weren't at the time yet where this is about to happen, where it's about to come to fruition. So everybody watching this, if they can just Try your best to hold the space for those of you that are awake and release the fear and focus your attention on the future that you want to create. There is going to be, I can guarantee you, hundreds and thousands of jobs that are about to uh, reveal themselves starting next year when things shift slowly. Um, and a lot of jobs are going to be created because of the humanitarian efforts. Because I, I have not only seen my youth centers everywhere, but I see um, uh, new beginning style rehabilitation centers, PTSG trauma centers for adults, um, a new completely new mechanism of healing centers, holistic wellness centers. You name it, there is going to be a job for you out there. So those of you who are feeling lost and, and, and don't know what to do with your life, I'm telling you, please listen to me. You are about to get something very soon. So just tell your tell tell the universe what it is that you're interested in doing and that job will will find you i promise it's it, we are so close so um when i watch interviews with people who are are 
you know, giving people negative um, things to concentrate on and nothing is happening and it's going to be another year of, of, you know, of hell and all of this. I, I just stop watching them and focus your attention on what it is that you want to create. Uh, because we're in the creation period. We, we're, we're in the healing. So we're in different phases. The people who are just waking up are going to be in the healing phase. And they're going to be looking for people like myself and all of you beautiful people out there that can help them heal and understand. And then the rest of us that are that are a little bit farther ahead are the ones that are the manifestors. Help. Let's. It's time to create now. So redirect your attention on creating the world that you want to see. And then the children are going to help us do that. So we're all working together. It's all hot hands on deck. And I believe truly within my heart, if everybody just stopped watching the news and stopped thinking about what could happen or what may happen or what stop and just say, I've had enough of this. This is what I am manifesting. This is the vision I have for the world. And I'm so grateful that it's already happened. Right. Um, because we just have to catch up physically because I believe it's already happened. We're just physically, we got to catch up. So direct your your thoughts uh and put your energy into something um uh creating creating our future absolutely That's my <laughs> it's beautiful advice and there's a few people already in the chat that's great advice thank you so much yes i appreciate that and i for one i'm also looking forward to this term that cliff high had coined uh, the new sci-fi world or the new electrics so when sherry's talking about all of these new jobs coming up all of these new industries with a lot of these secrets being revealed of technology that already exists but that has been hidden from humanity we now have the opportunity to take all of that back and create the abundance that we all want and deserve for our, ourselves and for our families so the time is absolutely amazing even though it doesn't always look that way i think sherry is right on track here by saying yeah enough of that we're done <laughs> change the channel and who watches the news anyway we are the <laughs> right exactly. Sherry. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, sherry in the last couple of minutes here let's go back to uh your intuitive uh, wellness uh website here let's talk about your books and some of your upcoming courses and how people can support you and your work here where do you want to start? Um, you know, I just listed my um, Ascension and Healing course. It sold out in a couple of days the first time. Um, right. And so I just put January dates. So that's up now. If anybody wants to have uh, the um, to take the virtual healing and Ascension course, including um, Reiki level one and two and learning um, your own. Basically what I do, I'm teaching people how to do what I do it essentially is what it's about. It's a four week class. Um, I am still doing um, one on one soul readings and intuitive energy healing to help people through this ascension. I apologize for those of you who are trying to get in and there's nothing available till November right now. And I sincerely apologize to everyone watching that has called me, emailed me and texted me that I've not gotten back to. I have hundreds of emails to get through um, every week and I and I try my best. Um, but I do have a family, three beautiful children of my own, and I, I need a break too. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, you know, so I, I, I'm not ignoring you on purpose is what I'm saying. So I do appreciate all of you that support me and reach out and I will get back to you at some point. Um, but yeah, so one-on-one -on -one sessions and, um, my class in January that I just posted dates for, um, and you can get a hold of me through, through, uh, through my website. There you go. So I wrote it on the screen there too. And I'll make sure they're in the description box below for the people who are watching this on replay. And I have to go, uh, maybe echo what Sherry is saying here too. I have a few thousand emails to go through too. So I apologize, guys. I'm doing my best at least to go through the technical support stuff for the emails and the products you've paid for. Everything else, I mean, right now, I'm still overwhelmed and backlogged there because of all the issues we had in the last couple of weeks. But Hang in there. I'll, I'll get back to you eventually. Uh, and if not, just email me again at some point here. We'll get back on track. So again, we're we're just two people here doing our very level best here to do what we're supposed to do for humanity. And we're counting on you to also do your part. So folks, man, again, how quickly does this hour go? This was the quantum healing with Sherry Divban. Of course, we are trying to... Okay, so Sherry, what did we decide here? I know I've had disruptions. Are we doing this weekly, bi-weekly? What's your schedule like? I know you're busy too with all of your readings and the kids and all of that. When do you want to do this next show? Because just judging from the audience member here, we shouldn't wait because there's a lot of interest in your message. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, probably uh, probably twice a month. 
Twice a month? Okay, so yeah. like a bi-weekly show. Okay, we don't need to hang uh, iron out the dates here on the show. I just wanted to let the audience know that that's what we're planning. So you and I, Sherry, can uh, communicate by email here too. And I wanted to let the audience know, Sherry and I did try to do the simulcast here just before the show, but for some reason, it wasn't accepting our code. So maybe <laughs> in the third episode, the third time will be a charm and we'll yeah, be it, able it, to... It finally came through <laughs> in the middle of the show. You know, Sherry and I were saying like that. Oh, no, come in at 10 o'clock. Did you mean to do that at, at 1 p.m.? Yes, I did. <laughs> but anyways, oh those God. are the little gremlins uh, we're dealing uh, with. Before we go, I, I I apologize for interrupting you. I just, I my, my guys told me that I need to address Carly Simon's comment real quick. Okay. What I want to manifest truly is not of this world yet. Carly, what I have been told is that think bigger. So I don't, I want you to not limit yourself by the confines of our current structure in our world. I want you to think bitter, bigger and I want everybody to think beyond their wildest imagination. And that is what we are creating. That is the point. So even if you think it's not a possibility, project that out, put that out there because there's, I think that the world we, we are creating is actually is beyond our imagination at this point. And we're limited by the confines of what we actually can see and what, what we're, what we're used to. And it's so much bigger than that. So everybody like pretend you're a child again and use tap into that imagination of seeing unicorns and rainbows and, and, and flying, you know, and that's the side of yourself that needs to manifest our future the right brain, the, the beautiful tap into your soul. So there is, there are no limitations. I, I just, I, I really had to say that really quickly. I love it. It's perfect. It's a perfect ending to the show. I was going to ask you any last words of wisdom and you just <laughs> yeah. uh, hit it out of the park. So folks, uh, please yeah. do go and subscribe here to Sherry Divan on her YouTube channel. Click that like button and, and those notification bells so you see that next animation video and you can share it with your kids as well. And of yeah. course, if you're watching this on Sherry's video uh, uh, on YouTube channel, we're going to share this video file with her as well. Uh, please do come over here at Jean-Claude at John Mystic 3, our third <laughs> YouTube channel. Maybe the third time's the charm here. Uh, yeah. So please go and subscribe there as well. And tonight, uh, join us at eight o'clock for the Wacky Woo with my friend Jason Nip4 and Penny Kelly. It's going to be one hell of a show. Penny has yeah. some more details on what she sees behind that white wall and how all of you can participate. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. This was the Quantum Healing, and uh, we'll see you soon. Oh, you want to say one more thing? Oh, no, I was saying bye. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. See you later. Au revoir.